PSOP. So the first hypothesis is that these agents would upregulate neurogenesis, increase the birth of new neurons, which we can measure. And secondly, that maybe these agents would diminish neurogenesis by stabilizing existing hippocampal connections. Because uh, I didn't know which way this would go. So you have to have uh, alternative hypotheses. So here, here's how we birth date new neurons. This is uh, an important, um, actually, technique that many labs around the world use. And we're trying to find a quicker way to do it. it basically, we had uh, acute effects of, of uh, psilocybin and chronic effects with intermittent weekly doses. One dose of every week for four weeks. That's the chronic. The acute effects, we'd give the drug or saline because we have the placebo control, right? And then we'd inject 75 milligrams per kilogram four doses over the next day of BRD. That would, what that did, by that pulse labeling, it basically birth dated the cells. So we knew on this day, the day right after that person got psilocybin, and actually the injection started about six hours, how many? Five minutes, wow. I'm gonna have to go to the payload real quickly. <laughs> And we also did low doses, intermittent. And there, the, the BRD was given uh, after each dose tweaks. Then we would euthanatize, and let's go on, next slide. And what you see, this is with bright field, these really dark spots, there's where the dentate gyrus would be. We'd count the number of BRDU positive an antibody against BRDU. Uh, keep on going, you see the green arrows where those are cells that were birth dated. And next slide, next slide. That's what they look like. And what you do is to see how many of those BRG labeled cells actually are neurons, you do double labeling. So new N labels all neurons in the granular zone. So here's two new neurons. So we'll go right off to the, the results. So one of the first things is that we found that psilocybin actually at the one milligram per kilogram dose decreased neurogenesis, had no effect at the lower doses. The next slide. I actually say proliferation. BRD is the number of cells, the amount of cells proliferating. But the birth of new neurons was also was decreased, but hit the, 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 the go ahead. Yeah. There's this trend towards increase. So can you back up? And that's interesting because at the low dose, there seemed to be an increase suggesting a biphasic response. And at low doses, these are single doses, there was an increase, and then at high dose, a decrease. Next slide. With uh, NBO. NBOME, the other agonist, it depressed at those doses, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and we realized we didn't get to a low enough concentration. We're repeating these with very low concentrations. Next slide, next, next. So there was an inhibition of neurogenesis, and I think I didn't get the stimulating part. Next slide. So, and catanserin, of course, uh, impeded neurogenesis. Next. So that makes sense, it's not stimulating, and there, um, we should actually do a whole dose response curve of ketanserin. So with intermittent doses, we found, next one, yeah. What we saw was something that was unexpected, that with the dose of 0.5, 1, and 1.5, there was a, at 1.5 an increase in neurogenesis with chronic administration. Next slide. So we saw that low acute doses increase at low doses with chronic in, intermittent, a 1.5 milligram per kilogram resulted in neurogenesis as well. So next slide. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to get into the, let's keep on going. So what happens to the classic condition? Go on. Let's keep on going. I, I, okay, right here. This is the paradigm. The first thing is there's a habituation, 15 seconds of tone, 30 seconds of nothing, space, and then a slight electric shock to the feet, 0.5 seconds like static electricity. <coughs> After a few pairings, the mice become immobile during the conditioned and trace element. And that's the acquisition phase. And next slide. The extinction phase is you eliminate the shock, and you see how many trials it takes to forget that association, to break that link. Next slide. So under behavioral, under baseline habituation, nothing's happening. There's no effective drugs. So they're not mobile. They're not the percent immobility in that box is unaffected. So these are doses that don't increase locomotor activity, which you might expect uh, with these drugs. Um, during the condition stimulus, you see by the third trial the PSOP uh, results in increased in mobility. So they quickly learned by the third trial. Okay, next slide. Uh, next slide. But they learned quickly to unlink. Go ahead, go ahead. See, by the third trial, these mice are no longer immobile. The mice that got chronic psilocybin 
quickly dissociated the, the neutral stimulus from the shock, and they resumed normal activity, contanserine, you see, there was no effect. So let's go to the very last slide. What are the clinical, okay, here, yeah. So the ability to dissociate unpleasant pleasant emotional responses from stimuli that trigger those responses was facilitated by psilocybin. It may explain the, the utility of psilocybin in treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder and other conditions in which environmental cues trigger uh, a need, for example, drug-seeking behavior. So, so this, in a way, provides a more fuel to the hypothesis that these drugs would be useful for post-traumatic stress disorder. And it didn't really uh, solve my problem of how can I demonstrate that these drugs will enhance memory. And, but there are ways that we're trying to solve that problem. So I'll end it here because I went over my time. I apologize again for the ridiculously short time for speakers and for questions. Uh, if you have questions, um, I'd, I'd like to invite you to come up to the uh, microphone. We probably have time for just one question. Uh, and then, is Bob Wald in the house? Bob? There he is in the back. Great. So come on up, Bob. And uh, any questioners, let me... Question. Okay. Uh, very interesting work. I work with dementia patients. I'm a psychiatrist in New York, and I'd like to see some of these tests done with, you know, dementia patients and see if we can increase their memory. And so, do you know of any studies that are going on? Or? Well, we're, we're interested in doing this in people who have the chemo brain. You know, we have hippocampal neurogenesis is depressed because of the chemotherapeutic agents, and they have depression and some cognitive issues. We want to see if psilocybin once a week might enhance the recovery of some of the very specific cognitive functions. I, I don't, I mean this uh, notion, you know, cognition is very complex with multiple domains and I, uh, my fantasy to use this drug to make you smarter, to prevent age dependent decline in, in, in memory, in short term memory, I think there's something to it, but we have a long way to go to really prove that. Well, thank you very much okay. for your work. Thank you.